Right, a quick update on our little Tudor um, tea shop, what we was quickly made the other day. Uh, we pr bricked all the bottom, Tudor at the top, put some window frames in. So we've got the window frames, I'll cut some tiny little square windows, because I think that's what there was. Um, we've made, made some supports, but it's easier to paint them before. They'll go under there like that, just to support the floor and the on this bit of hanging and then we've got the chimney to make we've just put a piece of black on the top a tip for the chimneys is when you cut this off and you cut that shape out that shape I keep the end piece that piece I keep that piece and the reason I keep that piece is when I come to make my chimneys I square that off on that side to a square edge and then draw my line down and I've then got the angle for my chimney so you keep that piece and then use it to form the angles for that piece a lot simpler and all I'm going to do now is stick these together uh, in a square and then mark the bricks out and I'll stick it on The thing about making chimneys is keeping these cuts as square as you possibly can and it does make it a lot simpler. Um, I tend to make it in one piece right from the off and then I'll just take that off all the way down back to my lines and the same way that side. Same there. And there. That's me chimney to start. I can put it in the middle, which I probably will. No. No, I've probably got to one side. And uh, it will depend on which side we go to. But now all I do now is sand that down so I've got it all nice and clean and all the lands taken back. Same with that side. And 
And like I said, the ad, the practice is keeping your, your cut square. If you can get that into that, practice and practice and practice, keeping that as square as you can makes life so much more easy. And then you end up with that piece. And then what I do then is I literally mark it out quarter of inches and draw the lines all the way around. Right, there we are. We've, we've marked all our bricks in. Uh, we've put a bit of fancy brickwork around the top, so it's a bit of 5mm in the middle and some 3mm just going around underneath it, bordering it. Just a simple sticking on job. Um, I never use the backs because it's one against the fence, so we don't use it. And we're going to pop it on this corner. Like so. Uh, oops, and that's it. There, land up. Done. And there we are. So that's it now. So it's virtually ready to go into the paint shop in Pat's department. Um, that's where it'll start to shine because you'll see the colours and everything else. Um, like I said, we've done all the woodwork, so we're going to have it black and cream, or whatever, white, off-white mate probably. Um, whatever colour she does at the front of the shop, I think it'd be black. Um, and then we've got to tile the roof. I've got to make the windows, like I said, some nice little square windows and a nice fancy door. And it's ready, so now it's off, off it goes to the paint shop. Add a little bit more water if you need to. For this colour I'm using the Reeves Raw Umber. For that colour I used the Artiste Acrylic Paint Linen. any little little bits that you might have missed being white it stand out like sore thumb so so that's that's the first woodwork layer done so I'll just leave that to dry and then I'll carry on with this rendering again and start putting a bit of shading on there okay so now I'm moving on to a bit of the um, highlighting now so what I've done is just put mixed a bit of this colour and this colour together to make a highlight colour which is like a taupe colour and all I'm going to do is just let's do this one with a slightly dry brush I'm just going to go very lightly across and if I've got too much just rub it in slightly slightly very wild I'm just slowly going to pick out the uh, the damage. Right, an update on the Tudor building so far. So I've got all the uh, timber beams done. I've got the Latin plaster insets done. Then um, what I've done next is I've put my base colour of buff tanium on for the brickwork and also buff tanium on or titanium should I say for the pavement. 
If you notice, there's some beams just underneath the um, the canopy as well. Also, what I've done is I've painted the canopies, and these will go on underneath like so. So what I'm going to do now is carry on doing the brickwork. I'll leave it to you. Right, here we are. We, here we are. We're at a stage now where we're putting the windows in. Um, I've got the gutters to make for this one. Pat's got to do the chimneys to paint them. I've made two of the windows, so I'm going to show you how I'll make the next two. What I tend to do is cut my piece, what fits in, to size right from the off. And then I know when I draw my dimensions in, it's just a matter of bringing it back. Same with the top one. So you've got a top, bottom and a door. Uh, we've had a little discussion what we fancy as a door. Uh, obviously it goes in from the back. Um, we might do one with a letterbox at the bottom, like so. Half paddled up to about there and then do a Georgian squares in the middle. Does that sound about reasonable? Yes, it's okay. So, We'll press on and do those three and then I can show you how to do them. Um, so that's the three pieces of three mill board I'd need. Bottom window, top window, door. Um, I've got myself a little piece of black, um, what we use for gutters. So I'm going to cut my pieces off for the gutter. Just three strips. I think Pat's got some square pieces for gutters, haven't you? Drain pipes. Um, I think I made you some earlier. Yes, I have, but um, I don't think I've got... No, not the gutter, the long strips, the downpipes. Oh, the downpipes, yes. I'm yeah, down so we've got pipes. some of them, so back has got plenty to go out with that. So I think the answer is to make it in one piece and pop glue that on, and then I'll pass it over to Pat. So first off, what I'll do is mark out my window for downstairs. So that's the way it goes in. I always check it, make sure you get it the right way around. It's definitely that way. I, mean, I always tend to make these a little bit tight, but that's that's how I like them. I don't like a lot of space because it only lets bits in. So you've got it there. First step is a square pair of glasses because I can't see without them. Quarter inch at the bottom, and then I do three sixteenths at the top. Three sixteenths. That side and three sixteenths this side. Draw these in. Again, pencil lines light. We're not trying to make a mark into this at the moment. We just want the outlines of where we're going with it. So that's our framework. We then divide that in the middle. So I've got three inches. So it's one and a half, and then just do a sixteenth either side, like that. And then subdivide that one, which is one and a quarter. One and a quarter divided is five eighths. And then just put a little mark either side of that one. Same on that side, one and a quarter divided in two is five eighths. And a little mark on that one. Um, I don't like them too thick, the spells. So I try and keep them reasonable not massively heavy I only think it spells with the air and the same with that one that's the three downward ones like that and then I do the same again the other way I divide it which is three and a quarter so three and a quarter divided in two is one and a half is three and then a quarter is divided in eight so it's one and five eighths. So I put the dot exactly in the middle and then just split it apart. So you got one to the left and one to the right. And then you divide the next part. If you look on there's roughly one and a quarter. So again five eighths. Just a little bit either side, same with that one. It's just over five eighths, but you've got to have really good eyesight to say, oh, that's not quite right. 
And if Oddie's body's looking to be buildings that class, I'll probably run a mobber with an engine. <laughs> uh, they'd be stood on it. So it's as simple as that. I'll just that just put that one in again. It's a little bit light. And that's all marked out, ready for cutting. So what I do then is get my favourite little scraber. There it is. It's an engineer scraber's point. Um, I just put in one of the usual things you get from um, Hobby Mate, Mate and all that lot. It's just a little with a thing so you can put it in. It just gives you a little bit more to grip hold of. And I just start slowly working round and I'm drawing them back in as though I'm redrawing it. But what I'm not doing this time is going over my own lines. So it's work all the way along the bottom. Do each one, then go to the next one. And we don't go past any line. Same there. Um, I don't know what Paul Colour's Pat's thinking of doing these. I think it's browning that you're going to go with. I'm not sure. I'll see how I feel when I get it on my table. And then I'm going to mark that one. And that one. And the final one, I'll spin around so my ruler doesn't slip. And that's them all going down. So then it's turn it to the around again and do it the other way. Again, just joining up the lands. Same again. I'm sure, you know, there, there is a lot of um, small model shops and things like that which will actually make windows. Um, if, you, if you find this is a little bit difficult because it is a it is a bit fiddly to do them um, you could always buy them but you'd have to pre-buy what you thought was right for your building and then build the frames to suit you know cut the openings to suit that window and um, that they're not expensive i have seen them knocking about but we like to be think we we, we make more or less everything out of it And just once more onto this one. And then last one, turn it round. And draw the line the other way. So we've now gone round every square and formed a square. What I then do is do it again. But this time I can see where I'm going because I've took I don't need a ruler and just follow the grooves. And you press in a little bit harder, still careful because you can slip with it, and then follow them grooves back again into each corner. And it gives you an area for your knife blade to slide along. So I'll quickly do every one turn it round so you do the right one and then turn it again and do the opposite way So 
when we built the house for a chap, um, a model of his own house, I had to do it in a smaller scale. Um, doing these windows in his scale, I think the squares were smaller than that square and they took forever. And I did it in the same board and it was like a marathon because I think he had about 41 windows, hadn't he? Yes. <laughs> Look on the, um, our uh, YouTube channel, it's... Is it called the big house? The big house, yes, yeah. Yes, the big house. It looks, we are really proud of it. I mean, it's something I've never done. It was a totally different scale. And we think it's absolutely brilliant. Really do, I love it. Yeah, it's purely on the site because yeah. of what you can achieve using Formex board. That's the reason it's on, not because it's going on a railway. No, it's too small. Because it's not. Big model, but very tiny building compared to what we have. Right, now I've done all that again. I now take the advantage... Um, so I'm not breaking anything and just rub all remaining pencil marks off Just give it a general clean up so everything's nice and neat I tend to Just wipe them over And that's it ready for cutting don't do what I normally do is forget to take the blue piece of backing off the back beforehand otherwise you're peeling off individual bits everywhere and then using my hook blade no. I'll each, well curved blade I will call it hooked the curved and gently go into each one so it's not going too far this cut that cut can go right to the corner this one you only go so far so you don't cut through this spars themselves. Again, do as many times as you think is necessary. Just work your way along. Nice and gentle. As you can see with each one, I'm not touching the blade into this corner. Keeping it away from it. If you do make the odd slip, you can just pop a bit of super glue on and it will stick it back together. But if you're careful, you don't need to do that. Just work your way carefully. And Formex being what it is, you might find one way is easier to cut than another. So you've got to just test it, test the water sort of thing as you're doing it. Another development in me tech technique is I don't put my tongue out as much as I did when I was a kid. <laughs> don't look good on films. And everything else to do, you have to have my tongue lolloping out to one side. And, but if that if it feels that helps you, you can do that as well, it doesn't matter does it. So again, turn it round so you've got a good grip on the wind there. And you're literally cutting three quarts, seven eighths of the way. So if you look on the back, all the cuts are there, but they're not continuous into one corner, but they are in the other. Then I turn it back again, and you do the opposite way. So it's back again down each one. Again, not going to the end. Just working your way down. And the fact that you've you've scrubbed it nice and deep makes it a lot easier. Don't go around. That's it. Uh, 
Now this is going to be a, a tea shop, this particular building we've decided. We don't know what it's going to be called or I don't. We think it's a young mystic who's bought it because she's gone with the purple walls. She likes the colour. But I think it looks fantastic on the row. I actually really love it. But I do have a I don't have many Tudor building zombie railways, but we did some of these years ago in wood and I loved them. And I love that now. I think that it just looks different. I mean, you could build a full village like this. Right, I've gone all the way down with each one. As you can see, they don't map, they don't, all the corners don't catch up now. So now, we go back to a straight blade. I'll just put a new blade in there because I've been digging about in the garden. I think I brought the tip off that one. This knife is a carpet fitter's knife. I was a floor layer, and it's a dolphin. Well, it's a delphin, but we always call them dolphins. Um, when the first come out was about 10, 20 years ago. And Pat's got my original one, what I bought when I was, was a floor layer still. And I bought myself a new one about two or three years ago. Got a real nice feel to them, lovely to handle. Right, so we're now looking every corner, and what I do then is go into the corner and just press down each one again. And if you do corner, irrespective if it's then what you think you've already done, and you'll feel you'll just feel it cutting slightly, like a little crunching feel, or it, you can just hear it. You're doing nothing more than just clearing the corner. Um, this could be the way where I started with my knife, so it might not need doing as much. But I still do it each one. Then turn it and start again. I think the the benefit of the reason how I like doing it, the windows is um, everything about all these. With me, it's about the building. Is you've made everything, and I take great pride in. People say, "Oh, I like that building. Where did you get so and so part for? How did you get that? Or did you buy it from this?" And it's not more not more pleasurable than saying, "No, I made that. <laughs> I made that part again. Just turn it." And I think it gives you great pride when what they're looking at is what you've created. And the thing about making your own buildings is the bespoke. You've got a space in your railway, you've got a place where it wants to go. You don't have to jiggle anything about. You make it and make it fit. And this one, to be fair, we have been jiggling the railway about a little bit. But the gap we left for this was made intentionally for that gap. And down the high street we... But we look at, at that and think, yeah, that's our street. And then one last one. one. This 
still don't always just pop out every one you will find there's still some will stick and there'll be a little bit but what I do what I'll show you in a second is I just check where the little mark is what's holding it in and just go back into that corner or oh, that side As you can see me now is pulling them up as I'm doing it. And there we are, that's them all cut. So now it's just a matter of pushing them out. Any what feel a bit tight, don't force them. I've got one and then you just look around to see, you know, there's maybe something that's just catching and it looks as though it's just there. So what you go, go straight back to it. Maybe just didn't go into that corner enough and just cut it out. That's all the pins cut out. And then what I do then is I get my knife and I go around and I look for any little feathers what I've created. And what that is is when you when you mark them with your scraper, you sometimes just come on the inside of that, so it just leaves a little bit just sticking up. So I'll just gently go around and just trim them off. And I go down every side. Just so that everything's nice and neat. Check each one. There's like that. You can just see the little line. Then once you're happy, you've got all your little bits out of your corner. It's that one looks as though it has. There's maybe a little piece in that one. You then get a nail file. Uh, one of these cardboard ones. I did actually go looking in, in our local store the other day. Uh, I remember seeing them where you can get these, like a pink and blue one on, like a foam. Mm. But it's quite thick. I, I, I might keep meaning to get myself some of them. Um, because they're a little, I think they're a little bit better than the cardboard one. And then what I do then is, I do exactly the same thing. Start on one, one direction, and then just tidy it all up, all the way. You're only taking off a little tiny bits of flashing. That's all. And if you feel as though you're pressing and it's bed flexing it out like that, just get rid of it where it is, and then you know you don't want to break anything at this stage. It's obviously the more time you spend on this bit, the better the look. And then turn it round again. Just gently rub them down. Any marks. Just remember it is a delicate, it's not delicate, delicate, but it is a delicate thing. So a little bit careful. You now don't go hammering at it. And... So if you do accidentally snap one. If you one snap off... one, just super glue it together. Don't think it's the end of the world or it's ruined, it isn't. You can just literally cut through one super glow, just glue it back on again and just tidy it up and nobody would ever know. Um, it's a lot easier than trying to stick bars in separate. I remember um, talking to a chap called Mike Duffy, lovely man, in um, Bradford last year and he says, I can't believe you did him in one piece. Is I've been trying to do it in separate for years and I'm sure now he doesn't because it's it's a lot easier doing it this way uh, Mike does some lovely buildings I've seen is he underrates when he talks about his buildings they're absolutely brilliant and there we are that's that first piece done so now what I do 
is I literally keep myself clean is get myself the piece of board I cut this off around one edge like that like so and what I'm doing is just making myself a little bit of a sill I then look at what I did I think it was just over a quarter of an inch like so care blade Cut that off. Chuck that off. <laughs> Bottom edge. Pieces, a little bit of super glue. Care bit to the front and down to the bottom and drop that level. You know your window fits, so it doesn't need to be thingy. If you'd cut your window a little bit shorter little trick is to bet this put that a little bit deeper and then an another trick is if you don't want it sticking to anything put it onto this backing that backing you can't stick anything to it it's unreal and that believe it or not is ready to go in our little shop window just making sure I've got me a little bit tight on that one. That's it. You're it nice and tight because the tighter you can get them, the better. Make sure it goes all the way in. If you've got to trim it, you've got to trim it. Make sure you can do it nice and level before you do anything else. And that's a completed window. Right, so now we're going to make the door. I've drawn out what we need in a door. Uh, how we're going to do the door is like a, a panel at the bottom and four panes of glass at the top. So it matches the windows to a degree. The first thing I did was mark in the outer casing. So I've scrubbed that all the way around. Like that. And then but you don't go through this top piece. So you've made a case for the for the for the actual frame. We're then gonna mark in the door panels. So the first one is this one. So we go down, and the next ones is those. Remember, we're doing exactly the same as the windows. We're not going through the spars, so we're just marking right along. Same with the middle part. We're just marking the actual pane of glass. What's got to come out, and then the next one. And finally, the other way. And the same with that one. From your bottom line to that line. Then we draw in the middle. We've got our panel. So we're going to create that. So it's them. Down like that. And that one. Down like that. And then across, like so. Again, not going over your lands. And like so there. And then the next one is the window. And we're just going to follow these up. can't always guarantee these look right so what we do is we'll do this make it cut it out if we're not happy we'll do another one and sometimes you get it right first time sometimes you don't it's got to be about the look of the building 
we tend to sit and judge it, look at it, think, oh yeah, that looks all right. Uh, no, that doesn't look so good, we won't do that. And it's got to be, you, you know, you just take a bit of time and decide. Right, so we've marked it all out. If you know what, we've not cut into there. The next part, I'll pop in a little door letterbox so Pat knows where it's going to be. It's roughly about there. So we'll draw another line across. And if we roughly centre it, like that. And the same with there. And they've got a little letterbox as well. So that one, we'll carefully mark in. Like so. These little touches, um, when Pat plays about and finishes them, they look fantastic. This is what makes the building bits and pieces. I'm now doing my usual clean up because everything's there where I want it to be. I um, don't know what type of colour she's going to paint this, but we'll see when it's finished. So I've now cleaned everything off. And you can now see how the door is going to look. If I pop that back in. Um, that's it. What do you think? Well, I think it'll look okay when the glass is out. Yeah, so that's that one. So what I'll do now is I'll show you this little trick we do. I can see my screwdriver. I'll use my little chisel. What I cut my bricks in with. What I do with these is your usual thing, go around again. Is that creating a beveled edge? Yeah, this what I'll do then is just show you. how I would create a bevel edge. So you go from this one inwards, so it's pressing like so. And what you're doing is pushing the formex that way. So same with that one. Then turn it round and push it the opposite way so the panel's going inwards. So is that like a maybe 45 degrees? Yeah, probably Probably about 45 and just work your way along so it's nice and smooth and then go across the opposite ways and then turn it round and do across the bottom and that creates can you see that? Yes. And that creates a panel. And now we're on our usual thing, is to go around the windows once more. Go right round everyone. So you've got a nice deep channel to work to. The other way, remembering not to cross any spars, leave the spars alone. And the, again, like I was saying, what you've got then is when we put make this door, there isn't, you can't bar one because. We've made our own. It's our own little design. It might not be right. It might be perfect. It's, it's individuality. That's what I like. And then we're just going to literally cut out the windows. So it's exactly the same again. Not going through the bottom.
and it rounds it all the last third. And then we go the opposite ways. Again, be careful not to rush past the edges. Just going steadily near them. And that's again exactly the same as before. I've gone right round but not into every corner. And it's literally the same thing again. Release every corner. Um, it doesn't take much longer to do every corner. And if you do it in the methodical way, it makes sure you aren't missing any. And it's so much better rather than damaging the windows trying to take them out turn it go right down the opposite way rotate it and go back the opposite way it sounds as though you know, I keep repeating myself but if you get into a routine when you're doing this type of thing it becomes so much easier and the final one should be that one And I think you'll find them coming out anyway. Yeah. So we've took those out. Like you can see, these little feather things. This is what I said to you. So I just carefully just pop them off with my Stanley knife. Just tidy each one up where you see it. All then start done. And then look that way and make sure there's nothing in there. I mean, Pat does actually sand all these down again after I've done it. She, she, it's like she says, the more you do, the better. Don't happen to be done twice. And like I say, the longer you spend on it, the better. The better it'll be. And that's as far as I can see them all cut off, all the little trimmings. I then do me tidying up. It's all nice and neat. Like I say, Pat will go over these and make sure they're immaculate when that we finished. That they're all smooth. Rest my finger under each one. You, you know, just to give it a little bit of support. Don't expect it to do it on its own. Turn it round. Turn it round again. And then last third, I think is that one. And that looks pretty good actually. Could have been that way. And our final thing to add to a door 
is the sill board at the bottom. Um, when I cut this off, I had some what fitted, but there we are. So what we're doing with this one, we're going in between those lines. Remember, this is the, that's the door. This is the casing. So we're going to cut a piece there and just trim that down. At. Um, you can do it in a little bit, I sometimes do it in 5mm, sometimes and, you know, make them a bit thicker. But again, just round that edge off. And then cut yourself a piece off. Um, Pat don't like these sticking out as far, so you only have them quite small, don't you? Yes. So we've got ourselves a piece. It's all about the balance of it looking right on the door. And then what we do then is, because this is a, a door, what you don't do is put it right to the very bottom. So you can actually draw yourself a line, if you feel more confident with a line. Something like a sixteenth off the bottom. A um, little bit of glue along it. Not too much. Right way up. And then just drop it on in between like so and then where it's overlapping you can have, for some reason got it overlapping just trim it back to there and that they're not too tight now that's him get it in the right way Make sure it's level at the back, and we're in. How's that? Well, we've finished the Tudor tea room now. So, as it's a low relief building, it will be stood up against the fence. So that's all finished. I've got curtains up, glazing in. I've got an air board for outside advertising what they do, tea, coffee, cake, etc. I've got a sign which says Ye Old Tudor Tea Room. And we've got um, a young gentleman there waiting for his morning cup, so he's waiting for him to open. But I will gradually fit this tea room out so that when we have our evening runs, the it will light up and you'll actually see inside um, but for now I'll just put a back on uh, to protect it. It's all being sprayed so it can now go outside and go into the town. Thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.